Many people believe frequency separation to be a high-end retouching technique, but it is not more high-end than using, for example, the hue and saturation adjustment layer or a curves adjustment layer. I would even argue that using the curves adjustment layer is more high-end than using frequency separation. Now, I thought I would create a sort of a series of videos on frequency separation because just so many people love it and it's just such a main, it became such a mainstream technique. But in this first one, I thought I would um, say why I dislike it. If you followed my work and some of my workshops or speaking events or anything, you've probably heard me say, I dislike frequency separation and I don't think it should be used and people should not use it. Now, I think as someone who teaches retouching, sometimes it's my responsibility to try to uh, try to help you in your path of becoming uh, a be becoming a better retoucher. And that's why I say you shouldn't use it. Now, I'm not saying that you should not ever use it, but I would say that please consider not using frequency separation, using something else before you consider using frequency separation. OK. So I thought I would, I would mention a couple of things in this first video and why I don't like frequency separation. And then we can move on and, and create frequency separation and uh, just learn about that. So first things first, I want to get this out of the way. One of the reasons I really don't like frequency separation is, is because some people advertise their workshops and tutorials as, well, we are going to learn frequency separation and this is the high end technique and wow, whatever. And I just don't like that. That's it, basically. So that's one thing. Now, the more practical thing is that actually is what follows here. So I just uh, set up a very simple, very basic frequency separation with two layers, one low pass, which has the uh, blur and one high pass, which is the linear light high pass looking uh, layer. Now, in the following video, I'm going to show you how to set this up and why it's like that. But in this one, I just want to concentrate on the fact and on the explanation of why you shouldn't use it. OK, so um, this is my setup. Now, if the first thing I want to mention why I don't like using frequency separation is that it's really destructive. Now, if I were to create a new layer under my frequency separation group and I started painting with black, nothing shows up. And it's not because I'm not painting. It's not because my brush is on zero opacity or anything like that. If I turn the visibility off here, you can see that it's there, but it's just a destructive method, which means nothing will show up underneath. And uh, there's no way. Um, it's, it's not something I could use in my professional work. My clients, they change their minds and I need to adapt and I need to change stuff. But for that, I need my techniques and my tools to be non-destructive. Now, frequency separation is destructive. So that's one thing. Now, the second thing is that it sometimes it's too cumbersome. So people like to use this for skin retouching because, well, it's in the name. It separates the details out of uh, from the uh, tones and colors. And that sounds nice in theory. Now, if you wanted to change a couple of things here, like, for example, uh, some blemishes I can remove and um, just note I'm on my high pass, some blemishes I can move around, I can heal and stuff. But and it, 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 it does its job beautifully. However, there is such a strong relationship between um, between the um, the details and the tones and colors that, for example, if I if I want to remove this pimple here, like so, you can see that it, it still has the redness there. it still has this bumpy tone here. Um, and I don't like that. So now I would need to go to the low pass sample again and uh, and do do the same process all over again so i did something that i could have done in one step and i did that in two steps okay so as i said sometimes it works but for some stuff it's just not not really useful so just imagine working on this image uh on the skin of this image with just frequency separation some areas would be nice, but some areas would be cumbersome to, to just heal and stuff. So that's another one. Now, this, the one, another reason that I don't like uh, frequency separation for is that 
Most people use it like so. They create a new layer in between the low pass and the high pass. They call it, I don't know, color or, um, I don't know, let's call it color. And they call it color. And then they get grab a brush or a clone stem tool. And then they sample an area and they just try to even out the colors and, and, and tones in the image. And as you can see, it doesn't really work. I mean, I know I've exaggerated it, don't say that. I exaggerated it intentionally. That's not how these people use it or that's not how I would use it. But the main reason I showed it this way is that now you can see that it creates this disconnect between the details and the tones in the image. Even if you use it sparingly, it can create these sort of artifacts where you can tell from the image that, well, frequency separation was useful in the retouching process. And that's not beneficial as a post-production artist. You don't want that to happen, okay? Now, mind you, I, I did that really poorly, so that's just an exaggerated effect. But even more than that, it just creates this, this illusion that but it's, it's not good and it's really easy to go overboard. So I would advise you to just avoid this if you can. There are better techniques. Just think about the relationship between and this connection between the details, tones, and colors. And the, those need to kind of move and shift together, just like with the pimple. It's not enough to remove the detail. You need to manipulate the color and the tone as well. So these are really important things to consider. Also, one more thing to note that I can't really uh, show on this image at the moment because I'm, I'm unwilling, basically, is that these uh, frequencies are okay. So these details are okay. I can remove that really easily. But what if, and this is, I know this is just going to be too um, out of this world. This is too exaggerated, but bear with me. But what if I wanted to remove his ear? I can't just go here and remove that, as you can see, because it's just going to replace the texture here with this texture. So if I wanted to do that, I would either need to create a new layer or create a new frequency separation with a different um, detail um, range, basically, because just keep in mind that the low passes uh, radius of blur defines the detail retention of the high pass so i need to create these couple of layers this group over and over again if i if i want to manipulate different degrees of detail in my image and that's just creating more and more destructive uh, groups and layers and i don't like that now it's worth mentioning that sometimes i do use frequency separation i think i've used frequency separation once or twice this year that says that it's not as frequent as you would think but for example it's useful i think i used it for removing a wig mesh so that was um that, that was a mesh from the wig here on the forehead of, of a gentleman and i needed to remove that i needed to make that disappear and for that i separated the frequencies i separated the details onto one layer and i separated the tones and colors of the skin onto another and then i could exchange and and put some skin tone not skin tone but skin detail um and 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 changed the wig mesh to the skin uh detail and that made the wig disappear uh, without making the colors look funky basically so it has its specific very very specific uses but it's not like a skin retouching technique it's just one technique that you can use okay i just wanted to make this point basically and uh, in the next video i'm going to show you how you do it just bear in mind and keep in mind all the things that i said be cautious about using frequency separation and be cautious about applying all these so-called high-end techniques, okay? So that was it for that. I hope this made sense and I hope you learned something. I'm going to show you how to do it in the next video, but until then, see you later.